Very friendly bunch here in Cotton, but uh, it is extremely remote. As you say, the nearest neighbour to this house is a good mile or so away. So, yeah, there's, there's no polling station on the doorstep. But the solution is really quite simple, and that is everyone just comes over to uh, Peter and Liz's house and goes into the polling station, which is, of course, their kitchen. Morning, guys. Morning. I know all the paraphernalia for uh, Election Day isn't here yet, as per... Council rules that can't happen until next week. Right, next week. Yeah, next Wednesday. That's when I go and collect all the um, polling things. You know, the ballot box and all the paperwork and the voting papers so, and everything. So how does it work then? Just talk me through what happened. Well, basically on the day, obviously, um, I bring my kitchen table slightly this way. <laughs> okay. I have the polling booths in the conservatory because I've got to be in eye shot. Right. So they're just going to go right yeah, over there by the window. Yeah, just by the window. And then basically people come through the doors, they get the paperwork, um, obviously to go cast their vote, they go back in the conservatory, then they come back in the kitchen and then they obviously pop their vote in the um, ballot box. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, our cat Diesel um, likes to lay on top of the, um, the ballot box. <laughs> yes. Is your cat getting in the way of the democratic process? I think he probably is. <laughs> because he's tired? Yes. Right. <laughs> he likes to lay on top of the box all day. And so you've been doing this for how long? About 14 years now. So, Peter, how did this uh, all come together? Well, I think it was about 14 years ago, our neighbour, uh, Hilary Bannister, did it. And um, she decided, for reasons she didn't want to do it anymore, and asked Liz. And uh, so I took over. So we, that's how we ended up doing it, isn't it? Well, you ended up doing yes. it. Yeah. Uh, and and um, we mentioned Ranveer was asking me earlier about cups of tea. I mean, it's such a nice sort of homely kitchen. If I came in here to vote, I'd be looking at a cup of tea, a bit of cake, maybe yes. a bit of lunch as well, to be honest. Well, I don't know if I'd stretch to lunch, but certainly I'd put tea and coffee on if somebody wanted one and, and do a mean uh, lemon drizzle cake. Well, we've got together the, this year's election uh, snacks. So, as Liz said, that we've got lemon drizzle cake there, a couple of brownies as well. Yes. So. I'd be here at 7 o'clock to vote, if that was the case. Yeah. You get a good turnout, don't you? We do, actually. We get between... Um, I think I've got 60, 61 on the electoral roll, and I get about between 35 and 40 people. Right. Actually, that, actually come on the... That's really impressive. And, and I guess this is nice just because you are all so remote. I mean, you don't have a town hall, there's no, there's no shops. No, no. Um, we've just, it's just a very, very rural community with just farms and houses. Right. Um, obviously, we've got no, church, um, no village hall or um, anything like that, so that's why, obviously, we do it in our kitchen. So it's just nice to see everyone, I it guess. It is, actually. We, sort of, we know the majority of people, obviously, um, that live in this area, so right. everybody that comes in, I, I know they are anyway, and if I didn't know them I've obviously got to know them now brilliant well listen thanks for joining us I hope it all goes well next week yeah, thank you and now we know the key to a big turnout 80% maybe is lemon drizzle cake